All right, persimmon lovers, this is Ross. Today's video is all about persimmons, especially the trees themselves. We're gonna look at about eight or nine different uh, persimmon trees that I have planted here in the Philadelphia area. We're gonna look at the different varieties, talk about American persimmons, Asian persimmons, the hybrids of persimmons. And we're also looking at my harvest, what it is I do with the harvest and how I select varieties or how I would select varieties uh, if I was starting over. So this is my harvest here. Before we look at the actual tree, this is the harvest I pulled off my Miss Kim tree this morning. There is some Jiro mixed in here at the bottom of this bag. Uh, and why I'm harvesting them all so early, you can see that these are still hard. None of them have softened up yet. In fact, some of them don't even have the best color. Uh, but I purposely did this because they need to be hard to create hoshigaki, AKA dried persimmon. And hoshigaki or dried persimmon, in my opinion, when done this way, not putting them in a dehydrator, not putting them in the oven, is the best dried fruit on the planet. So that's the harvest of essentially one tree. Now here's my Jiro next to it. We did harvest some of the fruits off of this, but it hasn't been all that productive this season. I think it bared a lot last year and that's probably the consequence. Next to it is the Miss Kim. And both of these trees are about the same size. Miss Kim is uber productive. I can't even believe how many persimmons this thing will produce. You could see the scars there of where I took the fruits off. Uh, there was probably just here in this section right here, about eight or 10 fruits. So that's unbelievable. Whereas you look at the Jiro, it's a lot less productive, but the fruits are bigger. Uh, the trees are about the same size and you can use them for different purposes. So Jiro being a non-astringent persimmon or Fuyu or also Guang Yang, which we have right here that unfortunately snapped in half last year after being so laden with fruit. Uh, it's recovering this year. Uh, there's also Tam Cam. Uh, these trees all produce a fruit that is not astringent and you just eat them crunchy like an apple. They're mild. And in my opinion, they're very good, but I would prefer fresh to eat an American persimmon, which we'll show you in a minute. All right, so now we're looking at my Rosianca persimmon. This is a hybrid of the Americans and the Asian persimmon. So any of the hybrids that you guys will find are combining the traits of the American and the Asian together to create offspring that is selected for whatever reason. And so this tree in particular has gained the traits of being a hardy tree, a much larger tree. The fruits are much more productive in terms of the sheer number of the fruits that are produced because the fruits are smaller. And the fruits do resemble, uh, it's a good compromise actually, of an American persimmon and an Asian persimmon kind of combined into one. The flavor's a bit more mellow and mild, but the texture's really awesome and creamy like an Asian, uh, an American persimmon that you might find to be a bit jammier. So when we just looked at the Asian persimmons on the other side of the house, Miss Kim and Jiro, uh, and we looked at Tam Cam over there, those trees are very easily maintained at six by six. Well, six by six if you really know what you're doing, but definitely they're gonna top out somewhere around 12 by 12. You know, a tree like this is just naturally very big. And so all the American persimmons are gonna be very difficult to maintain them at about 12 by 12. You're most likely gonna be looking at 15 by 15 or even 20 by 20 if you uh, don't understand pruning that much. Now the sheer weight of these fruits is enough to break someone's back. I mean, it's amazing that some of these branches are, have not collapsed for the sheer weight of the fruits, but I'm learning. Um, as you grow more persimmon trees, you'll see that you just have no choice but to support the scaffolds there with some planks or different things that you have. Now you'll see that in here, the fruits are starting to turn orange, uh, but what I'm looking for on this variety is for them to turn almost a red color. That's when I know that they're gonna be soft enough and probably the fullest in terms of their ripeness to eat properly. We actually have right here, the rootstock of the American persimmon or the rootstock of most of these trees called Virginiana. Now, what's cool about this one here, I've been trying to graft it, but what I think I'm gonna do is actually cut it really far back, allow it to really start suckering, and then I'll start stool layering it, and then I'll have all kinds of rootstock for the future of persimmon trees that I, I might want. Now, also over here, 
is a guangyang tree. This is very similar again to Jiro and Fuyu. Uh, there's almost no difference. I don't understand why we have all these names for them, but you know what? Uh, to each his own, I guess. It was very productive last year. We have about one fruit on it this year. So not ideal, but they do alternate bear. I think that's one of the problems with persimmons that you might find. So it's good to have more than one tree. And then also here is a sejo. So the way I like to think about persimmons in terms of how I enjoy them, and you may have a different order uh, for how you like to enjoy them, is first and foremost, I like hoshigaki the best. This is just, in my opinion, the best, like I said, dried fruit you can, you can find on this planet. And sejo apparently does it better than all other varieties. Now, another variety that does it well is haichia or giambo. These are just very big fruits, and because they're so big, obviously they produce a larger fruit when you have hoshigaki. Um, other than that, I don't think there's really an advantage. It's obviously easier to peel a larger fruit than many, many small fruits. So uh, to me, I would love to have a giambo. I'd love to have a haichi on the property. Giambo is supposed to be slightly hardier. And then um, the second way I like to enjoy persimmons, the second, my second favorite way I like to enjoy persimmons is actually a fresh American persimmon. So these are astringent, but because they are, in my opinion, they taste better, they have a more intense flavor. So I have here some proc and celebrity. Take the uh, calyx off of proc. We'll eat this. Yeah. So this is just, in my opinion, has more of a date rum raisin flavor, almost like a dried persimmon. But in my opinion, they're not as good. They're jammier though. Um, very, very jammy. And to me, they have a much more intense flavor than you'll find in an Asian persimmon fresh. And so for that reason, obviously I'm going to prefer these. I like the texture more. I like the flavor more. Some people are turned off by the American persimmon because they don't, um, they don't really know when to pick them. A lot of people pick them too early, then they're too astringent. They think the astringency never goes away. They have a terrible experience. They never eat them again. Other people will actually wait too long and they start to ferment. When they ferment, uh, you end up with uh, a fruit that tastes like Clorox or cleaning products. So uh, I wouldn't suggest, um, <laughs> I wouldn't suggest eating them in either of those states. You have to get them perfect right off the tree. And to me, there are very few fruits that taste better than this fresh. So finally, we get to the American persimmons. This is my proc here on the right, and this is celebrity on the left. Uh, proc is just an earlier to ripen variety. I do find that's a huge bonus, especially if I wanna eat persimmons earlier in the season, which I do, before the hoshigaki are ready. So that's a nice bonus. It also has a great flavor of rum, raisin, and dates, as we talked about. Celebrity, though, is a little bit on the uh, different flavor, different texture, a little bit more mild in that sense, but it is very productive. Uh, both of these trees, as you can see by the size, are very different than the Asian persimmons all over the property that we looked at. You do need about four or five hours for these trees to be productive or to produce some fruits. They can tolerate the shade, as I said, but they're not going to be as productive if we can plant them in full sun or uh, many more hours of, of sunlight than they're getting. Um, that's probably why Sejo hasn't produced anything yet. It's just the lack of light. But maybe this year, uh, next season, it'll turn a corner and that'll be the end of that. It'll, it'll start producing. Uh, each persimmon tree is a little bit different, but generally the Asian persimmons will produce at an earlier date than the Americans. They grow slower. Their hormones aren't out of whack. And so if you want to get an American persimmon or any of your persimmon trees to start bearing fruit earlier, I would highly recommend doing summer pruning. And I think there's a lot of varieties out there, but you don't really have to go crazy with varieties. Just um, in my opinion, they're all very similar and it matters about how you use them rather than um, you know some of these little intricate differences in the varieties that frankly doesn't matter too much. So thanks for watching this one. Hit the subscribe button for me, hit the like button. I'll see you for the next one, all right? Take care.